I ended up in somewhat of a feud with a famous actress, which resulted in her agent emailing me and asking me to share death threats. This is the story of You Suck by Abigail Breslin. So the year's 2014, and Five Sauce Mania, Five Seconds of Summer, for those of you who don't know. Five Sauce Mania was absolutely everywhere. Five Seconds of Summer had only kind of recently-ish broken out, but they were absolutely massive. And in 2014, a famous actress called Abigail Breslin, who's had many, many awesome roles, you may recognize her most as the young girl from Zombieland. She supposedly briefly dated Michael Clifford, who is the guitarist from Five Seconds of Summer. And they had a breakup. Uh, I presume it wasn't a very nice breakup because Abigail then released a song, a music video. Um, the song was called You Suck and uh, it's not the it's not the pinnacle of songwriting, um, but I, I think looking back now, eight years on, I think Abigail will probably say that as well. And that's not me beating. I'm not for once. I'm not being shady about it. I'll link it below. Uh, you can make up your own mind. But the lyrics specifically um, were quite cruel. I wasn't like a huge huge Five Seconds of Summer fan, but when this song came out, it became really, really big news, even to people who weren't necessarily in the Five Sauce fandom. Because the lyrics were so mean, and it was so obviously about Michael Clifford, um, there were lyrics about his physical appearance um, that weren't very nice, like, I hope your hair falls out, um, talking about the scar on his face. Um, there were lyrics that, that made it very, very clear it was about Michael Clifford, because it was like, uh, there was some referencing his tattoos, and there was a lyric, uh, the reference Try Hard, which is a song by Five Seconds of Summer, it was made very, very obvious and it, it became like the news of the day. Uh, as you know, there's like a 24 hour news cycle on Twitter. It still, it, it still exists. It just became the news of the day to everyone on social media and everybody, everybody had an opinion on it and everyone was sharing their opinions on it, um, including myself. I was a very opinionated young lady back then. I didn't really hold back. I didn't really have any business getting involved because it wasn't my song, it had nothing to do with me. I did think it was really mean. I thought it was really mean-spirited. Um, but I got myself involved nonetheless. And I tweeted, look at that profile picture, holy shit. Who is Abigail Breslin? And who told her writing a song about Michael Clifford's appearance would be a smart career move? Christ on a stick. And I followed it up with, word to the wise, if your ex is in a massive band and you want to write a song about them, don't. Just, just don't. Looking back, that one sounds kind of almost threatening, but I meant it in just a case of, you know, you, you feed yourself to the walls, really. There's what you think is like girl power, and then there's just, you know, rubbing yourself with a stake and going, come get me, wolves. And I also wrote, uh, 2 a.m. here, final note, writing a song criticizing the appearance of a guy is not empowering women, it just makes you an ass. Night, y'all. You know, that's Emma's two cents. Uh huh. -huh. You had other people uh, sharing their opinions, people who, you know, had quite big Twitter followings, including Chrissy Costanza at the time. Jessica Veronica, Ricky Dillon got involved. You know, everybody, but everybody was giving their thoughts on it. I then get an email because I used to just have a public, like, business email address because I didn't have a manager at this point. And it's from a guy called Alec. I won't give out his last name, but I'm going to read it to you now. Miss Blackery, not even a dear, not even dear, Miss Blackery. Off to a bad start. Ms. Blackery, this is Alec, and I am reaching out on behalf of my client, Abigail Breslin. Since you feel so strongly on giving your strong judgment on how people express themselves, maybe you can shine light onto how inappropriate some of the things people are tweeting about her. Hopefully you'll have the same harsh judgment for this as you did for a harmless song. Please take a moment to look at some of the following tweets. Now, I clicked on all of these tweets that were in this email, and they're mostly deleted, um, but they were being a bit mean about Abigail for a song, and I, I think one of them was, was lightly kind of threatening in a way that like a 13, 14 year old girl would be lightly threatening. But the fact that I was emailed by the CEO of this talent agency being told off for sharing my thoughts, you know, they weren't the nicest of thoughts, but I certainly wasn't, you know, trying to incite hatred. It was a very weird, and to this day, I think a very unprofessional thing to do. You don't do that. It's weird to go out of your way to try and get people to rescind their opinions. Like, on behalf of their client, like, has, had Abigail asked him to reach out to me? Possibly. Because I then noticed that Abigail began following me on Twitter, like, straight after all of this. Um, and I panicked and I blocked her. Um, I don't have a blocked anymore, of course. Um, but I just, I just straight up blocked her. I was, like, I'm, I was freaking out at this point, like, what is going on? So I replied to Alec, saying, Mr. 
<laughs> no dear for you either. I'm sorry to hear your client is receiving death threats, which I was. I don't think I don't think she deserved them if she was in fact getting them. However, these tweets were not created by me, nor do they concern me in any matter. So I'm confused as to why you would, as a professional, email me to inform me of such things. I can only assume you're emailing every single person who took issue with your client's offensive, hurtful song aimed at an individual she apparently was never even in a relationship with. The lyrics, I hope your hair falls out, I hope you fly to the moon, in reference to Mr. Clifford's tattoo, as well as insulting his physical appearance, is not, as many websites claim, empowering women, nor is it a feminist anthem. It is not, as you put it, harmless. As your, as your client's career suicide has clearly shown. That was mean. That's, that's an example of being mean. I wish to state that I, I'm nowhere near as confrontational as I used to be. I used to be very haphazard, um, and not afraid to burn bridges and just come across as a bit of a dick back then. I, I don't really get myself involved in, in such trivial matters anymore. Like, if, if something like this happened today, I'd just, I'd just sit back and watch it. I, I just wouldn't get involved. But back then, I was happy to throw myself into the fire. So, this Alec uh, responds to me, and this, I left it after this, I did not reply to this. I have reached out to several individuals who have perpetuated this situation with large Twitter followings. It would be much appreciated if you would stop pushing it to your following. I'm aware of what some of the websites have said. Our team was not privy to what was going to be said on websites about the song. I do understand how those lyrics have sparked controversy, but I think we can both agree that receiving death threats has taken the situation too far. I for nothing more than you to refrain- that's a weird sentence. I for nothing more than you to refrain from commenting any further on the video via social media. Your professional courtesy would be much appreciated. You found my public email address and started emailing me asking me to be nice or take my stuff down and you're the CEO. Although it's interesting because his first signature on this email said Chief Executive Officer and then his next email was Director of Digital Operations. From 7.20am to 10.06am, was he fired? Did he get demoted? In three hours? But basically, um, I did what any professional, courteous, you know, online internet celebrity would do. Um, and I posted those emails to my Twitter like a brag, which were then screenshotted and shared everywhere. And then that made the news. So you want to talk about perpetuating a situation? I think I certainly did. Um, and I regret that. I want to say now, um, I, I wish I hadn't got involved, not for any personal, like, selfish reason. Um, I just wish I hadn't been so immature, really. I'm the one that came across looking like a dick in this situation. And you know what? Whilst I've got you all here, um, I want to say, you know, I want to take this opportunity to genuinely, I mean, I, I do not think Abigail is gonna watch this video, but if she does, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry that I got myself so involved in a situation that had nothing to fucking do with me. I don't think writing and releasing that song was the best thing for your music career, but you know what? We all make mistakes and we all do things when we're like, she was only 18 years old, I think, when she did that. I was like 22 replying to her, which I know is not that much older, but, 18 years old, you make some decisions, you know, especially when you're feeling heartbroken. And it must have been a, a real horrible day or two, or a week or two, however long this, you know, vicious cycle continued. And the mistakes that we make when we're young, you know, they stay on the internet forever. And I'm sorry for my part in perpetuating it and drawing attention to it. And you know what? I had a look at what Abigail's up to now. And funnily enough, she still makes music. Um, she makes music under the name Sophomore. And I, I had listened to it. And you know what? It's actually really, really good. It's clear that she really does want to carry on making music and it's a lot more mature. And it sounds really, really good. It sounds like a lot of effort is being put into it. It's really cool. I'm gonna link it down below. And I suggest you listen to it. Let people grow. Let people make mistakes. I think if we just hold everybody by the things that they did when they were 18, then we're not gonna really move forward as a species. And you know what? I, I genuinely wish Abigail the best with her music career. And I really, really hope that people do give it a chance. Um, I've linked her latest EP down below. What do I want anyone to take from this? Basically, if you see drama that doesn't concern you online, just don't get involved. I know it feels like you have to give your opinions on everything, especially in pop culture. You really, really don't. It's one thing to spread awareness of political issues, inequality, or share things that are correcting misinformation. That's one thing. But when it comes to trying to tear down a girl who has clearly made a bit of an error, even though it certainly came across as though she was tearing someone else down, there was no need to stoop to that level. I know how it feels to be torn down online, um, and it's not nice. So. Don't do it. Anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, I shall catch you later. Oh, and have you pre-saved or pre-ordered my new single, Cry To Your Mother, yet? Huh? You should go do that.
because it sounds great.